My name is Lesiamono Lesempele, or you can call me Chef Les. I am an executive chef at Nyama Mama, and you know, a love of food and all great vibes. Uh, well, we, an executive chef is more or less in charge of the food business side of things. So making menus, costing menus, making sure that the, the business makes sense when it comes to uh, food. A typical busy day, well, uh, it would involve me getting up, uh, showing up to the restaurant in the morning, making sure that uh, all ingredients have been either delivered or supplied in great, quali great uh, quality and condition and that the team on site is ready, uh, you know, just to, to take care of the day's operation. So making sure that all prep is done in advance, that all bookings and liaison between suppliers and uh, different guests, whether it's an event or a special group, uh, is well taken care of. Basically, just take care of the restaurant operation and make sure that things flow smoothly. I'd first stay, say that I'm, I'm very lucky to have known that this is what I wanted to do uh, at a very, from a very young age. So the interest developed when I was very young, uh, as, as young as I can remember. And then that led me to uh, uh, you know, be drawn to like cooking shows and food related experiences like eating, you know, identifying good food and eating at, uh, that's just a fancy way of saying I could do it at the neighbors and know, what, you know, know when they're cooking good food and just go there and hang out and be interested in knowing uh, how that food is prepared. So I'd hang ar around the kitchen quite a bit. I would um, hang around my mom's kitchen quite a bit, almost every day, just you know, asking her questions, uh, seeing the process, uh, driving her crazy by wanting to taste the food before it's ready. So just uh, getting that interest also led me to uh, knowing for sure that that's what I wanted to do professionally. There are a few inspirations behind my, my reason uh, for being a chef. So for one, I remember we had a neighbor growing up who would travel a lot. Uh, he was in different cities. And you know, I kind of thought that's exciting, like living in a different country uh, while cooking good food or enjoying good food and experiencing new cultures. That, w that was very intriguing for me at a very early age. And the fact that uh, it was a, a, an interesting field, like watching cooking shows like uh, Hell's Kitchen, Gordon Ramsay, and seeing that intense work environment, you know, seeing flambés and seeing uh, like just basically really cool stuff happening every time. And all these moving pieces together, that was very intriguing to me. So. Uh, that was honestly one of the major reasons why I got into it. Got into Pomodoro, small Italian spot that I more or less worked for, well, interned uh, for three months and that like gave me the assurity that it's what I want to get myself into. So I later on went to Utali uh, did a short course on cake, uh, cake making and deco, then began like a small side hustle uh, with a friend of mine who we would like just bake cakes. She was like the operation side and then I was the production side so I would bake. She would take care of, of like distribution and things like that. So it grew into uh, you know a good business. So again that was another reason to for me to get deeper into food. Uh, then I went to culinary school, studied for about two years, uh, got quite a bit of experience. Um, now in a, a higher, more uh, intense uh, situation environment. And that exposed me to a lot. It showed me 
like different cuisine, different styles of food, different people because working in a hotel you have, you know, multiple cultures, uh, different personalities, different people, different backgrounds, different experiences all in one melting pot. So that was a very interesting experience for me. So I went to, uh, I went to the Norfolk uh, where I trained and worked then left the Norfolk, went to the tribe, both for training and then being absorbed uh, more or less into the team. And then left the tribe, went to Sankara. So I've been around. That was, a, that was an intense experience. I, I wanted a way to see the world in a, in, a, in a cheaper way. And what better way than, you know, get yourself into a, a, an opportunity or a job that will allow you to travel, see the world, in you know very uh, extraordinary situations or, or you know it, it doesn't get any better than living on a boat cooking there it was really an intense uh, situation for me to truly make an impact in culinary uh, you know, to a global scale, because that's what I'm going for, is um, to use my food, the food that I grew up eating, and, you know, the food that I grew up eating, if it was presented in a different way, perhaps I would have been more proud of it than wishing that I could have, you know, fast food or, you know, pizza every other day. We were fed with this false marketing or sense of advertising that the rest of the world's food is better than ours, that, you know, pizza and pasta and all these other things are much better than our local food. Yet, when you look at all these developed cuisine, it's just because it's been long enough to move from a point of sustenance, which is where our food is, to a point of an experience where they took these staples, for example, and I use this a lot, uh, mainly because it's my, it was my first experience in food, Italian food. So uh, pasta is one ingredient, but then they took one ingredient, which is wheat, and turned it into so many different kinds of pasta. And then because of that, they took, they, they appreciate the different regions where certain tomatoes do very well in a certain region of that country and they've perfected the art of just taking a very simple ingredient and not doing much to it because it's quality uh, it's a quality ingredient and they're not uh, trying to to overproduce if 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 i have that correct and 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 so they take this one ingredient and they completely maximize it and they are proud of their culture and then that becomes you know a global trend so what stops us from taking our ugali and just refining it a little bit moving away from tradition and culture and uh, making it something spectacular that can be enjoyed everywhere i mean food is food has many uh, has a lot of diversity but at the same time it has a lot of similarity, um, a lot of, you know, uh, indifference in terms of a, a, a certain cuisine from a, this part of the country or world and comparing it to a different part of the world. And you see that there is quite a bit of similarity. So for me, that was very important to, to make sure that we take our food first, instead of focusing on other people's food, use that as an inspiration, but perfect ours. I'll add in all the coconut milk, then I shall spoon over the sauce on both sides. So grab it by the tail and turn it on this other side, then spoon over the other side with sauce. You have to be consistent. Whether it's your dream, you have to be very consistent with your dream not to move from one place to another to another to another because you end up spending and wasting so much time starting on a new thing. 
So if it is what you really want to do, whether it's, it's art, uh, be it culinary arts, or music, or visual art, you need to be very consistent with it. You're not going to be on TV on the first day, which is what most of uh, these young upcoming uh, industry players uh, want to do. You want to get out of culinary school or finish high school and then uh, do a few tutorials or a few dishes and you know you automatically think that it's going to be an overnight. There's nothing like overnight success. There's absolutely nothing like overnight success. It takes time, it takes a lot of uh, focus and a lot of sacrifice uh, for you to get into this industry, you need to let go of a lot, a lot of unnecessary friendships, a lot of um, family time, because it's unfortunately it's one of the things that you do let go of. Uh, a lot of free time, because there is no free time in hospitality, hospitality sorry, when the rest of the world or the rest of the people are on their downtime that's when you're supposed to be working, which means holidays are off, weekends are off, uh, you know, so um, just, just be sure that uh, you have the right kind of drive and you sacrifice your time and eventually it will pay off and that applies to any industry really. You won't come out of uh, uh, architectural school and get a contract to construct or to design uh, a skyscraper in the first year that you're out. You need years and years and years of practice until you finally get where you need to be.